so what are we doing to um, what are we doing to support these initiatives, um, and why do we do it really? Um, well, I suppose you know there's an awful lot that could be said about sort of corporate responsibility, and certainly we have lots on our website about how you know as publishers we're dedicated to ensuring um, that knowledge that the knowledge we provide is professionally produced and rigorously researched and appropriately disseminated and alongside this com commitment to content we're also passionate about conducting our business ethically and delivering on the wider priorities um, that we share with other sectors bringing our environmental footprint down and building a meaningful community partnerships and providing a great place to work but as part of this the appropriate dissemination of content is actually key here we're a really large company um, that publishes important and valuable content and not everyone in the world is as lucky as those people in the UK and we believe as a founding member, member of Publishers for Development that we have that we should be sort of uh, delivering um, sustainable access to research and information and we want to take um, an active role in that um, but that's not just to make us feel good there is a, a positive side and a plus side for this as well for publishers um, and that is that by working with authors in developing countries um, it really does help with the increase of submissions and also with the increase of the variety of content that we're getting so in that sense we see it as a really positive thing to do um, right let's see if this is going to work now um, so how do we share um, the message of uh, developing country supply internally? Um, well, it's an ongoing challenge um, because of the size of our company. Um, but we do have regular newsletters that we send out. We've got one called Library Lantern, and that link up there allows you to, you can go and see a copy of it. Um, and that goes out to librarians and is also read internally so that we can find out what's going on. Um, we also use our own websites an awful lot and uh, we have sort of lots on there about um, what we're doing um, and, and um, our initiatives moving forward. We also have plans for the future as well and we have an internal learning site called My Learning um, which lists and hosts all the training that we can do internally as a, as a company and on there we're actually going to put a module on um, to talk about all of these developing country initiatives and why we're doing this and how ed, you know editors and anybody within the company can sort of join in to help with that. So when I started at TNF which was a couple of years ago um, I was put in charge of the access initiatives um, in the sense of actually facilitating that access um, and making sure that the account structures were all correct and um, negotiating pricing if that needed to be done. Um, and I didn't really give much thought as to what other people in the company were doing, if anything. Um, I honestly, you know, it came as a bit of a surprise to me when I found out that there was actually quite a lot going on in different sectors of the company. Um, and then it struck me that uh, we should probably all be talking to each other a little bit more than we were um, to make sure that we were aware of what the others were doing um, and also to make sure we weren't duplicating work and also to work towards mutually agreed goals so that we were all working towards the same aims. So it's early days, we've only had a few meetings um, and we're still finding our feet as that group um, but uh, we're putting together um, some, uh, some communications about what we're going to do and also um, we've put together our objectives which are basically um, to provide internal briefing and training, coordinate communications, PR, event coverage and also to have it as a forum for assessing impacts and reviewing um, what we've done with our initiatives and how they're working. So what are we doing? Um, well, we are part of Research for Life and we also work with INASP and Eiffel as well. Um, and we um, give our content away for free in some cases 
if there is a fee paid uh, for the content, we do work hard to make sure that the price is sustainable and we try to work towards INASP's uh, principles of responsible engagement for publishers, so um, things like making an effort to understand the, co the country con context and, and, all those, and all those points, it's very important. Um, we also have an active author workshop program where we go into libraries um, and give workshops about the best way to publish our content. Um, and we also do this in partnership with other board bodies such as AuthorAid, which is part of INASP. And uh, we have also started an initiative with Eiffel offering heavily discounted or free, in some cases, APCs. Um, we also um, have our own initiative called STAR, which is um, a program that allows 31 days free access to content for researchers in third world countries. And um, we have also, and we found that all these things really work. We did a, an author workshop in Kazakhstan recently, and um, on the back of that, we had so many submissions that came through from Kazakhstan that we actually had to advise our authors that it wasn't spam and that they were actually genuine and coming through. So it, it really does work, the direct action. Um, we also have an author mentoring at journal level program, so um, where uh, authors are coming through from third world countries, we give them very specialist support to um, ensure that they know what sort of level of return they need for the peer review process. And we're also working with co-publishers as partnerships um, and offering local pricing, um, such as the work that, or the partnership with um, AJOL. So um, this is something else that we do. And that's it from me. Thank you.